So let's get into some of the similarities and differences between the two products. So in Doors 9, there's a concept of modules. So in Doors 9, I mean, you certainly have uh, folders, projects. So typically for your program, you've got a, a single project and folders within it to organize the data. And then you have modules. So in essence, um, within a module, you have objects. So if you want to be able to write a requirement, that's going to be an object in a module. And so here's just a, a, a brief screenshot of a module or a section of a module. So in a given module, you have objects. And, uh, but really, it's certainly best practice to categorize your objects. So for example, you could easily determine what's a requirement and what isn't. So I would recommend having some sort of an attribute that distinguishes what is and what isn't a requirement. So in Doors 9, through the use of attributes, you can categorize what the objects are. Uh, likewise, there's um, an object heading. So um, requirement, or I should say object number sys27 uh, is a section heading, because you could see it, it's bolded, it's got a number. So in, doors, in a Doors 9 module, there's, you could clearly distinguish between a section heading or an object within it. But unless you're using attributes, that's about all you can do in terms of distinguishing things. Um, whereas in Doors Next Generation, it does not have objects. So this is something that took a little bit of getting used to. But so the idea here is that um, you have, instead of objects, you have artifacts, where artifacts can be pretty much anything that makes sense to you. So there's still, there's still this concept of an artifact type. So, for example, there's still a concept of having a text artifact type. So maybe that would be your software requirements. And then there's also a module artifact type. So that could be your system requirement module. So a module is an artifact, and, um, and uh, you can define what would be analogous to objects. So instead of just having an object and then using attributes to characterize it like you would in Doors 9, in Doors Next Generation, you could literally define an artifact to say, well, this artifact is a software requirement, whereas this artifact is a stakeholder requirement. Um, and there's little symbols that you could choose. So it's in terms of you could quickly distinguish what type of artifact it is. So one of the other things that you're able to do in Doors Next Generation is you have a, a centralized location within your project to define what type of artifacts and attributes you're going to have. So the concept of attributes is very similar. So in Doors 9, you have an attribute that you basically define for that module. Um, so for example, verification method. I mean, this is certainly, if you're going to be using Doors to track requirements, whether or not using Doors Classic, which is Doors 9 or Doors Next Generation, verification method. That's the method by which you're going to verify that requirement. And that's one I certainly recommend you put into, into the database. Um, and so in Doors 9, you have to define a, this attribute for each module. Now, one of the first pieces of DXL that I've written and others have written is basically the ability to copy attributes from one module to another. So if you don't have, and DXL is the extension language for Doors 9, so if you don't extend Doors 9, it, it would be pretty tedious to create an attribute and then try and create it again in another module. And there's different workarounds. You can create an attribute in a template and then copy that template when you start a module, so that way you don't have to recreate attributes. Um, but anyways, in Doors Next Generation, there's no need to copy attributes because you manage them in a central place. So every time you define a software requirement, for example, you would associate what attributes go with a software requirement artifact. So when